right, fight fans, here we go. Spar Star Promotion is proud to present the re-rounds of mixed martial arts in the Bantam weight division. Once again, our referee in charge of this bout, Steve Quick. And now, introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, he is wearing black and yellow trunks trimmed in red. He is training out of Saxon's Muay Thai in Van Nuys by way of Northridge. He weighed in 133 pounds. He brings to the cage a record two wins, two losses, with one win coming by way of stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Nick Ninja Jaramillo! His opponent across the cage on my right, fighting out of the red corner. He is wearing black trunks. He is hailing out of Los Angeles, California. He weighed in 130 and one half pounds. He brings to the cage a record one win with one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Adam Holy Hands Halton. All right, fans, here we go. The rerounds of mixed martial arts in the Bantamweight division. Here we go, Nick Jaramillo versus Adam Haltum. Jaramillo in the blue corner, Haltum in the red. Three two-minute rounds, no shin guards for this one. Both fighters uh, in that southpaw stance. Armillo swinging for the fences early, but yeah. missing wildly. <laughs> Haltum keeping his composure. Oh, lands a nice lead uppercut. Armillo is throwing shots, but he's he's almost doing it like he's like pulling back as he throws, which mm. normally means he's hesitant to get hit. Well, we're all hesitant to get hit. <laughs> he's being oh. a little overcautious. Nice spinning back kick attempt. Both fighters trying to figure the other timing out. Oh, low Armillo, blow maybe? Armillo's on the prowl, just winging. That was a back fist. Yeah, Nick threw a kick right there. It looks like he hit the elbow. And that'll hurt. If you don't feel it now, you'll feel it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, definitely pulling back a little bit. Nice front kick. Yeah, it looked like Adam wanted to touch gloves. <laughs> I, well, I, I, Nick threw like a high kick at him. Yeah, exactly. I, I think they were touching because maybe there was an inadvertent like groin contact on one of the kicks, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. An interesting first round. Yeah, A lot of wild strikes being thrown, not much landed. Yeah, a lot of feeling out going on right. in that one. See who can settle in here, maybe try to get into some kind of a rhythm. Didn't look like there was any threat of uh, this one hitting the ground or even not yet, any, yeah. Any grappling getting started. And that's precisely when you want to shoot a double leg. Maybe we'll see it. It's got to keep them guessing, huh? Right.
And definitely uh, from here on out, we're pretty much on the home stretch because we this we've got five fights to go, including this one, which we're um, just about through. to start. The, yeah, nearly halfway through. But the next four fights are all title fights. So uh, even though this one is also going to be very good, um, definitely don't want to miss those next four after it either. And it was a good single leg attempt from Nick. It was now turning into a double leg. He might have this if he can connect his hands. Oh, and Holcomb does an interesting defense by just kind of sagging. He's going to run the pipe and get this single here, but he's stuck in it. Yeah, there's no threat. Well, yeah, Nick trying to get to this cross side. Yeah, now he's safe. Before, when he's stuck in the, that knee shield, it was a little bit of a danger. A little bit of danger, I should say, but he's in, tr in danger of getting Von Flew choked from here if he doesn't let the head go. Yes, and I think that's exactly what Nick's going for. If he, Adam might be feeling that. That's why he's trying to hook this leg and go. Nick really needs to just turn his hips if he can and sneak through just so there's no attempt at a regard. Correct. He needs to slide that left knee baseball slide style free of that, that grapevine, and then he can really put that right shoulder pressure yeah. on the neck of Halton. And this will put the bottom player out. It traps their arm, especially with these gloves, very easy to do. Yeah. If they just lean that shoulder pressure, that right shoulder pressure on the top, even though it looks like they're, oh, and the ref is standing them up. This is. That's a terrible. Oh, standard. man. Clearly does not know the threat of the Von Flew choke there. Yeah, that, that was bad. Oh. Yeah, Nick could have very easily put uh, Adam to sleep there. And he was inside control, too. I mean, you never stand a fight up when it's inside control. Yeah. I don't care if the guy's asleep. Wow. That's um, not a good look. Just a whirling dervish of techniques here. Yeah. 15 seconds left. And I definitely, if Nick loses this one, I I mean, Adam should probably uh, make sure he discreetly pays the ref because uh, yeah. <laughs> that stand-up was hugely in his favor. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if Nick knows the Von Flute choke. It looked like he was kind of yeah, going for Yeah, I think that's it. what he was going for. Yeah, he, was, he had the arm trapped and everything. Like, If he could have freed his knee from that grapevine, he, he had the leverage. For yeah. Sure. For those of you at home that aren't as familiar with that Von Flew choke. It looks like the bottom player is going for a guillotine, and they pretty much are. But once you get to the cross side, um, typically the threat is gone from the guillotine choke. But you can lock their guillotine choke grip in across them and use your shoulder pressure on top to actually put the uh, bottom player to sleep. Famously done by Chad George uh, in Bellator, where the referee did not know the bottom man was out, and Chad George had to stand up and tell the referee that the man was unconscious. Referee was Mylon Ayers. Yeah. Who also referees uh, Sparstar Star quite often or used to. It's Shout a, out to him. It's a very sneaky choke, but especially when it was new uh, 10, 15 years ago, whenever that was. Yeah. Um, then, of course, if you stand somebody up in it, you get a pass. But it's been around for long enough, and now it's a staple of... Uh, guillotine defense. Correct. Get to that cross side and start putting that Von Flew choke pressure on and uh, they hope they can let it go at that point if you don't have their arm locked in. Uh, but this referee clearly didn't see that. Stood him up and uh, here we go. Round number three. And the only reason the fight went to the ground. Whoa, was some good punches from Adam. Oh, he's really finding his range here in round three. Good uppercuts and oh, some yeah. good straights. Oh, Mio might be a little hurt. He's firing back though. I was going to say the only reason that fight ended up on the ground in the first place is due to a, a, a caught kick, and it, it led to a grappling exchange. But other than that, they've been content to stay on the feet. Yeah, definitely. I would have to say Adam winning the the striking exchanges here in this third round. Now feel a little more confident, start to close the distance, and where he cuts off the cage here, starts throwing that uh, left uppercut. And he's comboing it. Yes. Oh, man. Th this is really good for Adam. Yeah, he's gotten very comfortable in this third round here. Working in this range is, is uh, just proving to be excellent for him. 
unfortunately could not find this rhythm earlier on in the previous rounds. Curious to see how the judges will score this one. Good inside kick from Nick. Oh, and the, maybe a low blow, I'm not sure. There's only about two seconds left to go. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I, I think this fight's over. Not sure exactly what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> I think the ref wants them to continue to fight but they, I mean couldn't be more than two three seconds left on this on the clock here and, and there we go got to imagine that goes to halt him Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, once again, let's give both fighters a big round of applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. We have a split decision. Judge at cage side, John Romero scores the bout 29 to 28. Mark Reyes scores the bout, oh, excuse me, in favor of, in favor of Jaramillo. Is it a split Ladies and gentlemen, judge at cage side, Glenn Paulson scores the bout 29 to 28 in favor of Haltum and judge at cage side Mark Reyes scores the bout 29 to 28 in favor of our winner by split decision the blue corner Nick Ninja Jaramillo <laughs> that's right fight fans Nick Jaramillo, how you feeling, brother? Hey, brother, good to be here, man. I can't tell you. Thank you, guys. Again, I can't tell you guys how close this fight did not happen. Three opponent changes. Again, blood work came back non-inclusive, so I had to retake my blood work the night before the fight. Again, guys, shout out to everyone who bought tickets supporting me. Explosive fit, Saxon's Muay Thai. Let's go, guys. Without you guys, I couldn't be here. And one last thing. To my father figures, my grandpa, my Uncle Lewis. Without you guys, I wouldn't be here. My grandpa fighting chemo, guys. Uh, he has cancer and he's going through chemo right now. And this week has been hard because we found out this week he started doing the procedure. So many things in my mind this week, guys, but... We got the job done. Thank you. What's up again, Fight Fangs? Give it up for Nick Halloweeno. All right, up next, fight number 10 of 13, Dylan Morales up against Daniel Martinez. Stay tuned. 